It's day two of Defemoremba, your daily ephemera inspiration in December. Every day from December 1st to 25th, there's a new prompt from our prompt list that we use to create an ephemera for our junk journal. My name is Luisa Heinzel and I'm very happy that you are joining today. This series is a collaboration with my dear friend Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. That means you get two videos every day to watch, but that's not all. We've mixed a lot of goodies and freebies for you into our videos and there will also be a giveaway. The prompt on our list on day two of Defemoramba is Splatters and Playing Card. And if you want to learn some German, it's Spritzer and Spielkarte in German. But that's not all. Here in my little paper bag, I have the animal that we want to use today. And there's also my little snack. <laughs> I guess this snack is a little bit bigger because the bag actually feels really fat. So let's see what's inside here. Oh, it's a whole package of snacks with strawberries, obviously, but let's look at the animal. So the giraffe is our animal for today. You can find all of the animal cards as a freebie linked down below this video and also the prompt list, of course, so that you can download that for free and use that for your own ephemera creations during Defemoramba. Strawberries for me are really fine if they are pure strawberries. <laughs> so I'm totally not sure what I will think about this little snack here. It says cacao mochi. I really don't know what that shall be. This snack comes from Taiwan and I'm really, really excited about this, but we will save that for later so that we can start with our project for today. So, the prompt list says playing card. So I have this normal vintage playing card here. This I think I got in a happy mail or I bought it on uh, a flea market or something like that. But if it was a flea market, it was an online flea market, I guess. And as you can see, this is a really unusual format. This card is a little bit longer than the normal cards that I know from normal playing card decks, but that doesn't matter. Uh, what I'm trying to say is if you are searching for vintage playing cards, then try it on online flea markets to find those. Um, there are many people who are selling those also in a really vintage look. I mean, they are used of course and then they look a little bit vintage they have this really cool rough feeling and they have this look like you have uh, used um, sandpaper or something like that of course you could also take a new deck of cards use some sandpaper and make this vintage look by yourself these mini playing cards here, I have dyed with some coffee so that they look vintage as well. That would be an opportunity to make your own vintage playing cards if you don't want to spend too much money on those yeah, uh, things on the flea market. And then I also have this jumbo playing card here. And I have taken out this one for today as the base of my project because when I thought about Defemoramba, I thought about last year's Defemoramba. There we also had the prompt playing card on our list. It was actually the first prompt in the last year. And perhaps you know this card here. I have taken that out as some kind of a inspiration. And perhaps you know that this is not my creation, but this is made by Barbara at 49 Dragonflies. In the last year, she has made this card on the very first day of Defemoramba and I saw the card. I fell in love in the very first second and I said to her, when you have finished all of your ephemera and your journal with this Defemoramba ephemera, then I want to buy your journal. And she said <laughs> she wants to keep the journal for herself. Of course, that's really an obvious reason yeah 
<laughs> I mean, she said she can't sell her journal and she wants to have it for herself. But I was so sad. To be honest, I was so sad. And then a few weeks later, she has sent this card as a surprise to me as a gift. So, Barbara, if you see this, thank you so much again for this card. This is such a treasure for me. She has used so many interesting techniques and this arrangement is just gorgeous. So I have this here on my desk as an inspiration and I also want to put that into my uh, journal later. And I have taken it also out because I want to show you the difference between a new playing card, like here on the left, and an altered playing card here on the right. So that you can see the difference if you perhaps are a beginner and you think, playing card? What shall I do with the playing card? You can turn a simple playing card into a piece of art with several different techniques and some really fun and easy things. So let's do that. So the Jumbo playing card shall be my base for my project today. And I wanted to have something that has a function. As you can see here on Barbara's card, she has made this little pocket to the back and she has used those stars. Um, that is actually, I guess, the paper that she had on her table during the last A round of Defemoramba last year and she has put that there that looks so beautiful and now you can write on the back or you can use that pocket so that means this card has some kind of a function and I wanted to have this for my card here as well so I think we can make something that can flip out from the card. Now I have this problem that this giraffe on this card um, as I said, you can find the cards and the prompt list linked, linked down below this video as well for you for free to download. But this giraffe on the card uh, isn't matching my idea for today. So I need a giraffe that has a very, very big head. This head of this giraffe is way too small for my idea. So I can't cut it out from the card and use it on my playing card. So I thought, what can I do and uh, which alternative materials could I use? I mean, I could take this and make a bigger copy, for example, but that would look totally strange. The quality would be really, really bad. And I thought, do I have any pictures of giraffes in my stash? I think I've searched for, for hours. It, it felt like days. And I couldn't find a giraffe. So I thought, what else can I use? And then I came to the idea to go through my stash of napkins. And I found a napkin that has not the head of a giraffe, but I found this one here. And what I also found is this thing. I know this is not a giraffe. Yeah, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm not so good with the names of the animals, yeah, but I know that this is not a giraffe. But please imagine, um, look only at the ears of this animal. If we would change the face up a little bit, then we perhaps could turn this animal into a giraffe. And that's exactly what I want to try for this project for today. But first of all, I need a background for my jumbo playing card. And for that, I'm separating the single layers of this napkin here. And as you can see, I'm a lucky girl because the second layer of the napkin also has some of this pattern here. Can you see that? That looks really interesting. That was not planned. Originally, I thought I want to use this more intensive pattern of the first layer of the napkin. But now when I see this transparent look, I'm really liking it. And this would also be nice, but um, the actual um, symbols on the playing card are shown much better through this transparent layer, or it's actually translucent is the right word, I would say. So let's try to use that and let's glue that down. I'm using some hard coat Mod Podge to gluing that down. And now I want to put some coffee on top of this. This is just some 
yeah, you know, this coffee powder that you mix with water and then you have a drink that tastes and smells similar to coffee. <laughs> it's no real coffee, but for those paper craft projects, it's very, very good. So I'm taking this powder and after spritzing some water, I'm putting this right on top of this napkin layer. And because of the Mod Podge, the napkin is sealed really, really well so that I have no problems with too much water uh, that can soak into the card or the napkin. There will happen nothing because the layer is sealed really well. And I want to have a similar effect to the hedgehog that we've made yesterday. So perhaps you have seen my video from yesterday. If not, check out the info box. There's a whole playlist uh, where I will put every video of Defamoramba in so that you can watch that. And to bring this coffee around a little bit, I'm using this mixture of some vintage photo ink and water. I had a broken um, oxide ink pad in the color vintage photo. So the felt of the ink pad was damaged because it was actually really old and then it died. <laughs> so I have uh, taken off the felt from this ink pad, put it into this jar and then I've just filled up the jar with some normal water so that the rest of the ink uh, went out from the ink pad and now I can use that for several different techniques and I think that this vintage photo color looks really nice in combination with the coffee. If you don't have such an ink you can of course also take some of your coffee powder mix that with some I would say hot water let that cool down a little bit and then use it instead of this ink stuff that would also be a really nice color for this. I want to have this a little bit, yeah, here you can already see it, a little bit extreme. I want to have much contrast and that worked really well with this technique. And now I'm taking some Distress Oxide Ink uh, Ground Espresso to uh, bring those hills of the pattern out a little, a little bit more, but just a little bit. So this looks, I guess, really cool already. I'm really happy with that. And now I want to try something that I have never done before. So I guess a playing card is made out of two layers, the front layer and the back layer, because there are actually two different prints, the symbols on the front and this yeah, neutral pattern on the back. So I'm taking a spatula and I'm trying to separate those layers to get really, really cool edges to my playing card. And this works really well if you start with a spatula and then go on with your fingernail tool <laughs> to separate the layers. And then I'm just carefully um, taking them apart a little bit and I'm crumbling the top layer a little bit so that I have these cool edges here. Now they are white, so that looks not so good. So I'm taking a little finger sponge and some Distress Oxide ink ground espresso again. And then I'm coloring those little areas there. After that, I'm spritzing a little bit of water to let the ink flow really in between of these both layers and to also get the oxide effect of the ink, of course really cool isn't it i mean this card is just cool <laughs> even if it's not finished so while that is drying <clears throat> i'm taking a piece of a little bit heavier paper this is actually some normal watercolor paper i'm hoping to get this texture of the watercolor paper to my napkin that i will glue down here now so i want to strengthen the image of the napkin a little bit I'm taking my Mod Podge again and I'm just gluing this little animal here down. And then I've just cut it out in the meantime and distressed the edges a tiny little bit. I've uh, teared the neck and I've also cut the neck a little bit slimmer to make it look more like a giraffe. I mean, it's not a giraffe yet, but please believe me, it will turn into a giraffe. <laughs> so I'm gluing this down with some bookbinders glue to get a really good, uh, you know, that it can hold really well. And now I want to have a really abstract pattern for my giraffe. So I have chosen this stencil. 
This is number 002. It's made by Tim Holtz and Stampus Anonymous. And I'm using this Distress Texture Paste Matte to bring uh, that through my stencil to get a really abstract imagination of this pattern of a giraffe. So I'm putting that not everywhere, but only in some places. And after that has dried completely, I'm using some Distress Oxide ink brushed corduroy because I think that this color matches the color of the giraffe really well. So first I'm bringing that to the stenciled areas and after that I'm spritzing some water to let the ink flow around a little bit. Um, not, no, no, sorry. I am so sorry. I'm making the voice over here for, I've recorded the video in German and now I can't really remember what I have done. I'm so sorry. I have not taken water. I'm taking um, some of my ink mixture, as you can see from the jar that I have shown you before. So this is just the um, vintage photo oxide ink mixed with water um, because this makes the brushed corduroy a little bit more giraffish. <laughs> If that is a word. So now it looks like this, but I think we need more contrast. And for that, I'm using some acrylic paint that I've just watered down a little bit. And I'm taking a relatively uh, white brush to put that to the edge of my card and also to some other areas. And then I'm using my water spritz bottle to let this acrylic paint run around a little bit and go into the little slots of the stenciled pattern looks cool not <laughs> i think that looks cool okay so let's go on with this flip out thingy i have chosen this patterned scrapbooking paper with those leaves because i think that this looks really interesting later on i will change my mind but in this moment i thought that looks cool <laughs> so i have cut that down in this shape so that i can fold it now to make um, a little flip out that has actually three areas. So I want to put that to my card like this so that we can flip it out later. So these um, leaves look really cool, I think. I mean, I thought it in that moment. <laughs> As I said, I will change my mind. But um, the back looks not so good. So I've decided to paint that with some white paint and then put the first layer of the napkin on top of this. So here you can already see it glued down. Um, I think that's not so much contrast now and that looks way better than before. So now I wanna make a little hinge to make this flip out work. For that I'm taking my little paper and fabric stash. So this is actually what Barbara has sent to me with the journal that she has made for me. And I'm taking this little piece of fabric uh, to make this hinge and I'm just applying that with some double-sided tape and additionally some book binders glue to make it really strong. Now it looks like this and you can flip it out and you could think, oh, that's a great idea. I can journal here. I can decorate this area. Um, yeah, <laughs> wait a little bit. This will change a lot in a few minutes. The first problem was that this, um, this uh, was not willing to stay closed. I mean, that came up every few seconds. So I've secured that uh, first with a little paper clip. I thought perhaps I can leave the paper clip there to um, let it be closed for the future. But uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> I thought about um, how to make this even more interesting and especially looking like a giraffe. So I decided that my giraffe shall get some glasses. Giraffes, for me, are always some kind of steampunk animals. So here I'm telling you my theme for this yeah, playing card. It's actually steampunk. And here I'm trying to decide which size of glasses I want to use for my giraffe. These are a little bit big and because I have embossed the paper before I've cut out those round circles these look like oreo cookies do you know oreo cookies <laughs> i thought that's 
that's too big and I don't want to have my giraffe looking like she has some cookies on her eyes. So <clears throat> I have also um, stamped and cut out this hat. Uh, this comes actually from a Tim Holtz stamp uh, collection as well. And when I compare the hat to the glasses, the hat is way too small and the glasses are too big. So this is a very good proportion, I would say. Looks way better than the other thing. So uh, yeah, <laughs> let's, let's take these as the glasses. But this looks not very steampunk. I mean, steampunk is always with gold metal and this you know this really <clears throat> rustic feeling on it so i have this nail polish this actually comes from barbara as well when we had our meeting in may uh, we had a little fun shopping thingy <laughs> and we made also a video together i will link that down below for you as well so we went shopping and we have chosen some different items that we've used later for our video and for our project that we've created in that video and during that shopping trip she has chosen this golden nail polish and i was so happy that i had that here to bring a little bit of gold to this head for my giraffe it was actually not so easy but yeah <sighs> beautiful is something different but it is gold now <laughs> so for the glasses um i think i can't use this uh, application tool of the nail polish because it's too big I didn't want to ruin a paintbrush by dipping that into my nail polish. So I think we can use um, those bling bling um, things here. So these are actually a little bit um, shiny as well. So I have glued them to these uh, glasses here, but not the whole way around. But also you can see it approximately the half of each of those round things i think that's totally enough i want uh, i i don't want to have it too kitschy or something like that so that's not the end result for my glasses but uh, i was really happy when i had that <laughs> so barbara has also sent this thingy here and i think this is also a typical thing for steampunk uh what's the english word i think it's gear isn't it um, so I thought, why not including this here as well? Because this um, scrap stash that we've sent to each other is also meant as a challenge and as an inspiration for our projects during Defemoramba. So we've decided that we want to give us a relatively personal stash because scraps are always a personal thing, aren't they? So uh, we've sent that to each other and now we can use the scraps from the other um, in our projects. And I want to use this gear here today, but I want to have it a little bit outstanding. So um, I have to think about that a little bit and play around a little bit. So I have taken out my other gears. <laughs> this box actually came from a really, really fantastic viewer of my channel. She has cut out so many die cuts uh, for me and sent these to me so gorgeous so thank you very much for that again and i also want to use those tiny playing cards here to combine them uh, with the gears and also i want to have them um, attached to this flip out and then i have this little cluster here that i also received in a very very great happy mail and so thank you for that as well um, and i want to have this in combination with barbara's gear here on the bottom as some kind of a yeah not a focal point because the giraffe is actually the focal point isn't it but as something that is really outstanding because i wanted to showcase this beautiful gear that barbara has sent to me this area on the right side now looks really white to me it actually doesn't fit so well to to the rest of the card. I mean, it divides this card into two parts, I would say. So here I'm trying to put another playing card here. I mean, it's also nearly white, but not totally white. I thought I can um, attach that there in some way to also have this playing card feeling going over the whole project. But 
I was I was totally not sure if that's a good idea. That looks so strange. And here I was at this point where I thought, where can that end? I mean, this background and the giraffe is so beautiful, but how shall that end? So can we be satisfied with this? Actually not. Do we like this flippy floppy thingy there that always comes back? No, we don't like that. Do we like that this bottom part is dividing our beautiful background, I mean the actual card, into two parts? No, we don't like that. Do we like this background and do we think that this is now a giraffe? Yes. <laughs> do we think that we shall take our snack now and perhaps find some solution after having these mochis from Taiwan? I think so. So I will have some of these now. I will unbox that. I will taste them. And I'm sure that after some sugar came to my brain, I will find a solution for this problem. <laughs> I don't know if these strawberries here um, are a good sign for this whole thing. <laughs> this says cacao mochi. But I think that this has nothing to do with cacao but let's open this up Ooh, oh oh <laughs> we got two of these with the package that's good so i can save one for the german video <clears throat> and can use one for this video here that's great so it looks like this <laughs> a little bit strange so let's take one out Ooh. The consistency is really interesting. A, um, a few weeks ago, Barbara has already sent some mochis to me. So I know the consistency about the, uh, of this. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's check. There's a tiny bit of something inside. Mm. It tastes a little bit like strawberry flavor. This thing inside I really don't know what, what sh that shall be. It's like a cream. Really sandy, I would say. Not so bad. But, mm, to be honest, Barbara, the other mochis that you've sent to me were way better. There are also mochis available with sesame. Uh, is that the right word? And other like um, plum flavor, for example. These are really stra strawberry-ish. A little bit too much strawberry for my taste, but that's only my taste. They are, I, I guess these are really good mochis. But I have to think about the, the rating for these for today. Okay, so let's bring this package of the mochi into my candy journal. If you want to see how I've created this journal out of a candy corn package, then please check out the info box. I've linked the video down below for you there. Uh, I've just stapled the package to my page. I mean, that shall be a memory of those international snacks that we are having here and not a beautiful journal, by the way. And the ranking is 5 out of 10, <laughs> I would say. So it was okay, but it was strawberry. Uh, so let's take back our project and let's see if we can find a solution after having this mochi. So I think the background of the card looks really cool. So perhaps 
the journal can help to find a solution. So first of all, I'm searching for a page where the actual playing card can look great. So that has to be um, a relatively neutral page. And I've chosen this one here because we have the black on the right side as a really cool contrast that works well with the colors in the card, with the black in the glasses, the hat, and also in those tiny playing cards. And now I'm thinking about a way to attach this card to my journal without having the flip on the actual card. So why not turning the page around like this and then use that part on the other page as a pocket and this like so. When I flip this, I mean now I'm making the voiceover uh, to my actual video that was recorded in German, yeah? When I had this experience, I was like, oh my goodness, how the heck can this be so beautiful now? I mean, look at that. And thank you, Mochi. <laughs> so I've decided to create this pocket on the other side of the page, like this, and have um, the actual card attached uh, like a tuck spot or actually a pocket or whatever, you know, I'm taking this double-sided tape and um, attaching that to two of the sides of the card and I'm just gluing that to the page like this and I'm um, putting the other thing to the other page and this little thing with the tiny playing cards I'm just using as a tuck spot. That solution for me was so simple and that was such an eye-opener that I thought, oh my goodness, what the heck, so easy. So here I'm trying to find a way to um, make this flip thingy into a tuck spot. So I'm just stapling that with one staple thingy. Um, and that, that was, for me, that was just mind-blowing. <laughs> so yeah, after I had solved that problem, I thought those glasses actually look a little bit strange. They look like black circles. There's missing something that connects them to the background. They need a little bit of this metal look as well. When I cut out those circles, as you can see, they have this little frame around that's embossed into the paper. So my die cut can emboss this frame, but you can't see it because the paper is black. So I've decided um, to make it gold. And for that, I've used a very thin paintbrush and some gilding wax. Uh, a black pen, of course, would also be a possibility, but I don't have one. So that actually worked better than I thought. And now it looks like glasses. And here you can see me thinking about if I shall connect those both round pieces, because normally glasses have this thing that holds them to your nose. I, I don't know, this bridge be between the glasses. <laughs> I don't know how that is said in English. So uh, I've taken a black pen and I have connected that and then I thought, okay, hmm, not the best idea, but perhaps now it looks a little bit more like glasses. Uh, let's think about this problem <laughs> a little bit later, because to be honest, I really don't like that. It looks not so cool anymore, but okay. So I want to go around the giraffe with a black Stabilo oil pen to shade the giraffe a little bit. Um, I've used the pen in combination with a water brush to blend the color a little bit. And I made that really dark and also let that flow into those stenciled areas a little bit. You can, you can see the finished result. Now it comes out a little bit more. I mean, the giraffe actually comes out from the background a little bit more. And yeah, do we think that that was a good idea to put this bridge between those circles? No, actually not. But we have some butterflies. And as you know, butterflies can solve every problem. Butterflies on the nose on a giraffe look actually really beautiful. Butterflies in combination with steampunk are absolutely great. If you are a beginner and you don't know about this butterfly phenomenon, let me tell you this secret. If you have a problem yeah, and you don't know how to solve it, take a butterfly, take some glue, 
glue the butterfly down and your problem is solved. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Yeah, that sounds like a joke, but please believe me. Just take some more butterflies. So this one here that catches actually the color of the head of our giraffe really well. In the camera, it looks totally different, but please believe me, in, rea in reality, it's nearly the same color. And because we are working in collaboration with Barbara at 49 Dragonflies, we need a third butterfly. Otherwise, she would be really sad. <laughs> so I have just stapled the antennas to my butterfly to get this stapled look like I have it on the tuck spot um, on the edge of the page as well, just to get this met uh, metal feeling, <clears throat> excuse me, to this card. Uh, so now we have three butterflies. I think Barbara can be happy and I'm happy as well. <laughs> but our prompt list also says we shall use some splatters today, I guess. That is the easiest thing of this project. <laughs> so I thought black splatters would be really cool, but we already have really much black on this card. And the flow of the card goes in this diagonal uh, direction. So much black in this line would be really too much. So I've decided that I first want to go with some white splatters. I mean, it's also my style to use white splatters. Um, and I've applied them in this diagonal direction with the flow of the card. And then later on, I've taken some black acrylic paint, watered down a little bit. And then I've splattered only a tiny little bit of that to the bottom of the card to give it some kind of a base and to grab this black again that we have in the rest of the card as well. So what uh, did we learn today? We can turn any animal into a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> Steampunk and giraffe is a really good combination. Butterflies can solve every problem. We also have to be very thankful because of the mochi. So thanks to mochi <laughs> and thank you to all of you out there as well. You are always so patient when I change my mind in my videos. I'm so grateful for that. I, and I want to try, uh, I want to try, I want to take the chance to say that because I receive so many beautiful comments that say that you are okay with that and that you appreciate when I'm taking you through my process, even if I change my mind totally during the video. So thank you so much for that. And now I want to include Barbara's card into my journal as well. But as you can see, I can't put it here. That looks totally strange. And that wouldn't be a fair game because Barbara's card is so outstanding and so gorgeous. So I want to try to find a really good place in my journal for her card. So here you can see some close-up uh, views here of my card. And what I also have to say, please don't forget to check out Barbara's video and what she has done with today's prompt. I'm really nervous <laughs> and I'm really excited about what she has created. The link to her channel is down below in the description box and there's also a whole playlist of Defamoramba with all of our videos. So until today there are not so many in the playlist because it's um, um it's day two, yeah? But into this playlist there will go every video that we both are recording and that we've published. So please check that out. And I am hoping to see some of your creations on social media. You can use hashtag Defamoramba for your post. That's also written down in the description box for you so that you can copy and paste that. And I'm hoping that we will see tomorrow for day three of Defamoramba. Stay creative and see you tomorrow. Bye bye.